Good morning. A uh, very warm welcome to everybody here today. We are so happy and quite frankly amazed. So many people are here with the weather we're having. You folks are fantastic. But it sort of tells us how wonderful a woman Linda was. So thank you all for being here today. Our celebrant is Father Augustine Joseph, and we'll get shortly, shortly, started shortly. Thank you. Please stand. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Linda died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. We want to welcome all of you to this celebration of life for Linda. In occasions like this, we realize the great importance of our Christian faith. Because Christianity is all about, as we know, resurrection of Christ, which gives us hope, which gives us strength, which gives us comfort. So we pray as we gather together that God may forgive whatever failings Linda may have had through human weakness and bring her to eternal home in heaven. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Linda, whom you have called to journey to you 
And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we have the first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for in the eyes of men indeed they be punished, yet is their hopeful of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in a furnace, he proved them, and as a sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Lord is my shepherd 
A reading from the book of Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and my time of departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The first place I like to offer my prayers and condolences to the family who are here, who are grieving. It is a loss that we dearly feel in our hearts, especially when our mother or our wife or husband or parents pass away. They are part of our life. And the loss becomes more and more painful when they are still young and not that old. And Linda, as you know, she was not really old, old in the sense of 90 or 95. But God deemed that this is the right time for her to finish her race. As we heard in the second reading, I have run the good race now, it's interesting that what Timothy writes, I am being poured out as a libation 
and my time of departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. That's our Christian spirit with which we look at end of our earthly sojourn on this planet. A lot of times we forget the reality, the truth, that we come from God and we return to God. So the starting point and the finishing point is basically the same. And in between these two points, we are given some time on this earth to fulfill God's plan in our lives and in the lives of others. I'm sure Linda influenced, touched the lives of so many people. That's the reason why many of you are here. In fact, one person came up and said, Oh, Father, she was so kind to me. She took me to hospital whenever I needed and helped me a lot. So these are the things that we remember. And we can also say what God remembers about each one of us. How well did I live my life? You know, sometimes in our earthly life, we are so preoccupied with our achievements, our success, our accumulation of this and accumulation of that. Like I was taken to a house by a person who had died and the home was up for sale and the relatives wanted me to go and see the house. It was so stacked. <laughs> with the things from the floor to the ceiling. So I said, now we have to enter this house like a smoke. Weave through like, you know. Sometimes our life becomes so cluttered with the so many things that we fail to understand the importance of our presence before God. All achievements all things are great. But our priority of life, priority of values should always be clear. As we heard in the gospel, blessed are the poor in spirit. So you can be a billionaire and yet be very poor in spirit. What does that mean? It means realizing that all that I am, all that I have is God's gift to me. The same with the family. The husband on waking up should thank God for his family, for his children, for his wife. Then you see the family life becomes more happy. Same with the wife. So when we realize that the persons we have are children, we do not take them for granted. We cherish them. We appreciate them as God's gift to us. Then, truly, we are transformed in our relationships within our own families. A lot of times family lives become difficult or unbearable because this realization is not there. As in the gospel we heard, being poor in spirit. Poor in spirit means thanking God for all we have, including the people in our lives and all the things and realizing they are God's gift to us. We cherish, we nourish, we thank God for them. As we come together and pray for
for the repose of the soul of Linda and comfort the family. Let us all take this to heart, that everything we are, everything we have is God's gift. And we need to develop a sense of gratitude in our hearts for God and people. And truly then, we shall be happy, as the gospel we said, happy are you when you realize this great truth. Please stand for the intercessory prayers. We, the parishioners of St. Charles Borromeo, we remember our beloved dead, friends, and family. And in the Catholic tradition, the month of November is the month we set aside for remembering, particularly remembering our deceased family and friends. And if you were here in November, during the weekend masses, you would hear us during that month call out the name of Linda in prayer. We have all to see this around the church and people bring pictures of the deceased family members and place them around the church. So you rest assured we'll have Linda's picture here and we will be praying for her. We'll call out her name at the masses in November. So at this moment, I'm going to invite Jim to come over and enroll Linda in our Book of Remembrance. God, the Almighty Father, raised to Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Linda, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. For Linda, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Linda, that they be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may be rewarded for their goodness, we pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of raising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother, departed sister. Cleanse her of her sins and grant her the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated.
pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Linda, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain or sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying, as one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Linda, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant 
that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, to whose dear apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Seeing of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, one of the Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With the body and the blood of
Holy Communion. Now, Holy Communion is restricted to those who are Catholics and practice the Catholic faith. But all are welcome to come up. So if you are not receiving Holy Communion, please cross your arms across your chest. That means you are coming up for a blessing and not for receiving Communion. Thank you.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Linda, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we have the words of remembrance. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, seeing you come to honor my mom means the world to me, my father, and the rest of the family. Most of all, I'm sure that mom is touched to see you here. I think that it is important that we end this funeral service on an uplifting note. As much as she appreciates you coming here, she would want you leaving feeling better about the lives you have ahead of you. I feel that I need to remind many of you that her story is not an easy one. She had significant medical difficulties throughout her life, but importantly, she never let those difficulties define her. In fact, I would argue that her strength and grace through these trials is truly what should define Linda Angela Beanie Ryan. So in that spirit, I will start off her remembrance a bit dark uh, but I promise you that it has a positive ending. I was about seven years old when I heard the worst words you can say to a parent. I was watching TV. It was some low-rent CW family drama. The son was incredibly angry at his father. Drop dead, he screamed, and he slammed the door. The father in question just so happened to do exactly that about an hour later. The son was heartbroken because he believed that his father died believing his son hated him. To me, the idea that a loved one could die thinking that I hated them made me incredibly sad. On that day, I vowed to end every interaction with my parents with an I love you. 
Now, I thought that this was an incredibly sweet thing to do. <laughs> Mature, even. My parents heard this and thought it was adorable. Uh, however, my mom decided to take it a step further. She, when I told her that I loved her, she hit me with a doozy. I love you more, she said. I was affronted and indignant. <laughs> How dare this woman who gave birth to me claim that she loved me more? I disagreed and we argued. Mom won in the end. She gave me a cookie, waited till my mouth was full, and promised that she loved me more, and then ran away. <laughs> she was cute like that. I was still indignant, but I was enjoying Chips Ahoy's finest, and didn't have any room to complain. She won that day, but we would have many similar uh, battles throughout the years. She was special, I tell you. Very few people I have met in this life come close to the amount of kindness that she had in her heart. From a very young age, my mom had a passion for helping people in need. Her earliest ambition was to join the United Nations in order to help people around the world. Some of you may not know, but English is not her first language. She grew up speaking Italian at home. She eventually learned English in kindergarten and believed that she had an ear for languages. As a matter of fact, she spent high school uh, dedicating herself to learning French and won the French award three out of the four years. Tragedy struck when she realized that the UN wanted people to know at least five languages and that she had not quite learned French as well as she thought. This did not deter her from dedicating her life to others. She involved herself in so many worthy pursuits. She volunteered at the Valacare thrift shop in order to help people pay their medical expenses. She raised money for the school. Um, she raised money for the uh, basketball league at CYO. She raised money and baked cakes for this church. She almost volunteered to chaperone a middle school dance, but a particular son of hers wanted to slow dance with a crush of his at the time and convinced her otherwise. He shall remain nameless. <laughs> she cared for people, many people. Most inspiring, I find, is how she cared for her mom in the twilight years of her life. She regularly visited my nanny, who suffered from extreme dementia and didn't recognize us. Despite the obvious pain that this situation would bring her each visit, she reintroduced herself uh, and befriended her again every time. Her compassion was something truly beautiful to behold. It was only matched by her consistency and energy. And speaking of her energy, she was energetic. The number of things that this woman did in her life was astounding. She was a world traveler. She had been to Germany, Ireland, Britain, France, Mexico, Hawaii, Canada, China, Turkey, Russia, Greece, Greece, Spain, Portugal, and of course her beloved Italy. She was proud of reaching out to her long lost family over there and rekindling our connection. She also had many jobs over the years. She established herself as an administrator at Hewlett Packard and worked for, there for the bulk of her career. She retired early and within a few months was inconsolably bored. She got a job at the Livermore Valley School District and not long after, she realized that she hated working there and retired again. <laughs> Only to find that she was again bored and restarted her career again at the Livermore Valley School District. She then remembered that there was a special episode of Blue Bloods airing that week and promptly retired. <laughs> After the season finale, she decided it was time to get back to work and started at Sandia National Labs. After having to deal with high security areas therein and being escorted to the bathroom one too many times, she decided it was time to stay retired. <laughs> My dad and I joked that her chief medical condition was that she was chronically employed but I think that she learned from, an early on, from early on that she needed to be active. And her belief from that stems from the fighting spirit she developed at a very young age. When she was 12, she came down with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's disease is a rare type of blood cancer that is very difficult on anyone, but particularly cruel on young people. She underwent radiation treatment and kept fighting to survive. She won, but the battle did leave its scars. Her hair regrew and she was able to attend school and play softball again, but she was told that she would never be able to have children. Despite this, after she married the love of her life, uh, Jim Ryan, right over there, uh, they were able to have me. 
Beforehand, though, a doctor reiterated that her chances of conceiving were very low. He even had a fun baseball analogy to describe the hopelessness of the situation for her. It's the bottom of the ninth, you have two outs, two strikes, and it's your last season. Which was rude, uh, and my mom did not take too kindly to. When they were finally able to conceive me, she ran into that same doctor again. Remember me? <laughs> Looks like I hit a grand slam. <laughs> and here I am. She never stopped fighting for what she wanted. She wanted to see as much of this life as possible. She fought breast cancer and thyroid cancer. She underwent heart surgery twice for valve replacements. She was on first name basis with all the doctors at Kaiser. Nothing could keep Linda Ryan down. She was amazingly tough, and I have never met anyone so strong and so capable. I think because of her many near misses with death, she truly appreciated her time on Earth. She loved so many things in this life, a glass of vino or three with her friends, a night spent binging 24 and eating ice cream with her family. She loved serial detective dramas like Monk, Perry Mason, and of course, Blue Bloods. She loved the San Francisco Giants, even at their worst, and there were some bad times. She loved visiting new countries and meeting new people. She loved the color purple. She was crafty, and she loved to cook and bake. Barring one particularly runny egg salad, she was quite good at it, too. She sewed all of my childhood Halloween costumes, and she loved Halloween and dressing up to give candy to the children. She loved Christmas and seeing all of the beautiful lights and for a brief moment how it felt like the world could be okay. She loved this country, she loved this church, and she loved her family and her friends, and she loved you, all of you. And she is smiling down on us and is delighted that you are here with us today. Through all the conditions that were thrown away, she loved her time here with us. I have in front of me our last communication. The night before she passed, I sent her a text saying, I love you. Her last message to me was, I love you more, as was our <laughs> custom. I fell asleep before reading this message. Those were the last that we exchanged in this life. I want to quickly apologize to Father Justin Joseph, this congregation, and God uh, for what I'm about to say, but dang it, she won in the end. <laughs> Even in her last few moments on earth, she managed to get one more win, and good for her. In honor of that kind, generous, energetic fighter, Linda Ryan, start a fight. Tell the people you love that you love them more. Because win or lose, you get the message across. Your life is better with them in it. I know that my life is better for having had her in it. Thank you for everyone attending, both in person and via, via the live stream. Uh, to Father Justin Joseph, thank you for leading this Mass to Angela Schwieg for her piano work and being a great help in general. To Cantor Mary Jo Malibuyo and to Jim Oliver for live streaming this Mass. And to the parish of St. Charles Borromeo, particularly Brian O'Reilly, Mike Putnam, and the Amazing Graces. The Amazing Graces is a parish group that is providing the food and services at our Keeley Center, where we will invite you to join us and continue to celebrate Linda after the Mass is complete. Thank you. Thank you, Fitz James, Ryan, for the beautiful tribute to your mom. And as we heard, you know, she was a wonderful person who was always there for others in spite of the many challenges she herself faced in life. That's a good reminder to us to be there, to help, to be available, to people around us. We continue to pray for her, for the family especially, that they find strength in their faith in the Lord Jesus, who tells us, I am the resurrection, I am the life, and that's what we are all praying for, and that's why we have gathered here in this church, because we truly and really believe that like Christ Jesus, we too shall be raised up in glory. Thank you, and 
Ryan already thanked everybody, so I don't want to repeat that. So please stand. At this time, we have the final commendation. Into your hands, Father of Mercies, we commend our sister Linda in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Linda in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. At this time, our holy celebration in this church is over. We are all welcome for a reception to our hall, parish hall. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.